Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna check out Manny's incredible custom eight foot reef tank. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reef. And as touched on in the intro, today I'm out on the road. I've been invited to Manny's place to check out his incredible custom build, an eight foot mixed reef tank that has just gone past the one year mark. And I'm really excited to see this tank because I know in Manny's household, there's some interior design and I know the cabinetry at this tank has been done by the same people, Hayden from the Kitchen Design Center that did the cabinetry on my dream reef tank. So I'm really excited to see another big size custom reef tank with some really high quality fittings to it. And I know that Manny's got some really clever approaches to things, some amazing fish in his system and some very established corals, especially for a one year old reef tank. So I figured there's no time like the present to roll to Manny's house right now. Let's check out the footage. All right, I'm here with Manny checking out this incredible custom eight foot mixed reef aquarium. We're gonna mic the man up, talk to him about uh, all of this incredible fish, coral, equipment, all of the processes, these parameters, everything we can to get uh, as much information out of the man himself here, just so that we can try and learn as much as we can from this amazing system. Let's get jumping into it. Well, firstly, tell us about the tank, the size of it, Custom built, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah, it's custom built, um, built by Starfire Aquatics. Lovely. So um, it's been pretty much smack ban on, on a year ago. I got it just before Christmas last year. Wow. So it's been one year. Uh, a lot of the um, corals have been from previous tanks. So okay. obviously uh, you can see the large scrolling Monty there. That's, yes, that's yes. a few years old. Sure. I've had that from a, a previous tank. I um, had a few more acros and some other uh, corals, but I seem to have lost some of them over the year, I guess maybe from the transfer. I also had an issue with um, the KH, it ran okay. out. Okay. And then I didn't realise for a few, uh, a few days. Um, so that caused a bit of a, a spike in the um, KH. Yes. And then um, I, at one stage I was, I was also um, dosing um, nitrate yes and then my nitrate um doser drip fed the rest of whatever was in the bottle so <laughs> it went from just siphoned in yeah it, it just drip it was drip feeding from it was hovering around five and then went up to about 25 so sure decent spike yep and so i lost a few more corals as a result of that but i think everything's pretty much under under control now so it's been pretty uh stable it looks looks incredible what what size is the tank it's, um it's eight foot yes or two or two, two the old uh eight foot in the old measurement, 2.4 yes. in the new, mm -hmm. um, by 70 by 70. Yeah, nice. It's got a beautiful presence in this um, room here, it really fills out the space perfectly. And, yep. and it's just on a year old now, and some of the corals have come across. What about uh, the, the fish? The yeah, a lot of the fish have also come across. I've added a few more. I've got, I think I've got about nine tangs in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a, two different sets of clowns, some anthias. Um, some gobies, I've got a, a pyramid butterfly, um, I've got a, a couple of cardinals as well. Um, yes. Yeah, and that large uh, lipstick tang's a new recent addition. Um, Beautiful fish. I love the, um, the barbs on that, if you see the, the, yeah, the yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, they have. It looks quite uh, ferocious, but it's pretty Such a tame. presence, yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's yeah. got those big barbs there. That's interesting. got two on one side and one on yeah, the other. Yeah, I think one of them must have broken off yeah. at some point. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, and I've added, recently added the powder blue. You can see that's still f sort of chasing around the uh, powder brown there. Yes, they're, yep, they're, they're still working things working out. Working things out, yep. So a little bit of a hierarchy sort of um, s uh, positioning and then... Uh, well, I can imagine. I mean, you've got a clown tang in there, a um, sohole tang. Yeah, so a lot of the uh, aggressive tangs are all. <laughs> it's definitely going to be there, some, so. um, some some hierarchy workout, which is yep. to be expected. But they're all looking so nice and fat and healthy, and settling in an absolute treat. Yep. And then you've got um, yeah, so you've got a couple of uh, Oki clowns. Yeah, a couple there. there. And, and then, then you've got the, a the, um, the Clarkies. Top? Clarkies, yeah, 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 Clarkies, yeah wow. So. Um, and they normally host the anemone, um, the carpet anemone is oh, quite, yeah. quite new. Yeah, beautiful. I haven't they, even noticed that down there. What a stunning piece. Yeah, that's, um, and I've only had that for about a month or a month and a half. Wow, before, very so that's, nice. And they normally host and sleep in that. And when I drop in food, 
they will often take the, um, they take the food. Yeah, to the um, oh, incredible. Mem- Beautiful. So this thing's been here for about a year and yep. you've uh, moved across some pieces from, uh, as, and livestock I should say, from previous tanks. W- w- what's got you to this point in the hobby? What's, what's been the history of uh, reef keeping uh, for yourself? I originally started off with a two foot by two foot by two foot cube. Yes. Um, and then from that after, I think that was about 12 years ago, I had that tank for maybe three or four years. And then mm-hmm. after that, I got a four foot tank. Yes. And had that for a few years and I thought, well, I wasn't, I don't want to be continuously upgrading. I'm just going to bite the bullet and just go, um, <laughs> go as big, one. big as sort of what would comfortably yep. fit. And Jump what, straight to the end game yeah, tank. So, yeah, and that's when I ended up going for this um, this uh, eight foot tank. So wow, incredible! Try to automate as much as I can. So yeah, I've got yeah. um, a drain in the back corner there, which goes out to the garage. So okay. just to, to do a water change, basically just open the tap. Yes. And then I've got a pump, a Sichy pump, which pumps water that I've mixed straight back in so I don't need mm-hmm. to carry any buckets or any, any of that sort of stuff. So yeah, beautiful. Straight out to the garage and back from the garage back in. So. Automates it as much as possible. Tell us, speaking about equipment, tell us about, maybe if we start from the top of the tank yep. and, and work our way down, you've got this sure. beautiful custom made hood here. Yep. Nice hinges to make easy work in there, gives heaps yep. of access. Yeah, so I, um, I actually automated the lights, they go up and down. So yeah, lovely. So if you look at this. Um, so oh, you can look at that, magic. Move them up. Yeah, sensational. And then they go down. Uh, that was a, um, a modified garage, remote control garage door opener. Yes. Which yep. I modified. So it's quite good. And I've got a, quite a variety of mix of lights. I've got some old AIs, uh, 52s and um, 26s. And then I've got some new AI uh, Hydra 32s. Yes. And then I've also got a Radeon Gen 6 as well. So there's a, a pretty much a, a mix of all, all the different types of lights. Yeah, nice. So this, and the reason why that is because some of the lights were the original lights that I had from the previous tanks. And then as I, as I upgraded, I, I went from the two foot tank to the four foot and now to the eight foot, so. They all blend in together really nicely though. Like yeah, you, I think if you close the hood um, and close the cabinetry, you can't really tell that what sort of lights and you can't really tell the mix. No, exactly, could, exactly. It makes sense rather than replacing all of them. Yeah. You can just uh, add ones on that you need and that does the trick. Yep. Beautiful. And inside the tank, equipment-wise, we've got a variety of flow sources there as well, I yeah, can see. Yeah, I've got two MP60s, one on each end. Mm-hmm. And then I've got, um, again, on, on each end, the Nero 5s. Yes. And then all the older style of um, pumps that I've had, which were the quiet drives and some um, Tunzis. Some Tunzis, yeah. are yep, all yep. At, at the back, just agitating and pushing water through the, um, the live rock and pushing it forward. Yeah, nice. And yeah, I see bare bottom, so you can definitely yep. keep some flow aimed at that uh, at the bottom and keep it all uh, all that to try to suspended. Let yeah, the, I used to I used to have sand over the years, and then I found I just found myself having to siphon the sand and uh, just have more maintenance. And and this way, um, being a bigger tank, I thought get rid of all the sand and just as you say, you, you can push the pumps as hard as you want, and mm-hmm. the sand's not going to go everywhere. So it's yeah, for sure, works works very well i just yep. noticed this multi-cap uh collection at the back here with the green and red fusing into each other yeah that was an i had an original quite a very large um green um cap yes and it was like a big massive fishbowl and then when i moved it um as i moved it, it at uh, some parts of it broke off and then mm-hmm. i had some parts with um rapid tissue necrosis okay yes so I broke off whatever was left, and then I, I mixed in some of the red, and it seems to have thrived now. So Absolute you can see it, showpiece. Yeah, yeah it's actually um, it's actually um, encrusting on the back wall there. So it's going quite well, and, and the red and the and the green are encrusting into each other. Which yeah, is good. yeah, they're absolutely happy living into each other there, yep. which is a really cool sight to see. I love it, and as you say, now growing onto the back wall, it's yep. um, it's becoming a structural piece of the scape, which is amazing. Yep. Now, I've got sidetracked by the Monty, but uh, we'll, we'll keep going with the equipment. Tell us about uh, the filtration and uh, the, the engine room, I guess, on so, this So, yeah, tank. the filtration. So, I'll just open this up. Um, turn all this on. Um, so, we start down this side where the water drops in from the overflow. Yes. It's going through two Clarice uh, Gen 2 5000s. Yes. Um, I decided to split the, the flow because I'm not sure that one um, would have been capable of handling it. So this way, sure. half goes to um, the front and half to the back. Yeah, nice. Um, and judging it, by the colour on the rolls, they're, they're pulling out no shortage of items. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm of items. so happy with um, the, um, the fleece rollers compared yeah. to the socks that used to 
Yeah, it's create um, an enormous amount of work, you know, washing them every two or three days. And I had about 10 or 15 socks and had to put them through the washing machine. And <laughs> it was just a pain. And, creates and, a heck of a job, definitely. Yeah, and I find, and, and um, I've actually been tracking the, the length of time that the, the rolls last. They last about six months each. Yeah, nice. So wow. I figured, you know, for, for six months worth of sock, worth washing socks, it's well worth it. So Definitely well worth it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that goes. That's the first stage. Then it yes. goes through to the uh, sea torch. Um, sea torch bees. Yeah, beach beast two fifty. Yeah, big uh, skimmer. That's yep. the biggest one that they've got. Yep, yep. Yeah, and I'm exceptionally happy with that. So that that's really good. That's um, such a big, high performing skimmer, and it's dead silent. Yeah, you can barely hear it. You just see that beautiful white, fine bubble foam in the body, working a treat. Yep, and that's, I think, I mean, it lasts for normally about, um, if at that rate of skim, it lasts me for about a week. Yes. But um, depends if I wet skim or dry skim, but yeah, a week's, a week's um, pretty good. I don't have to worry about emptying it out every day or anything like that, so it's good. Yep, yep. and then you've got the Auto Aqua switch on there just in case she fills yeah, just up quicker in case. than expected. Yep. Um, although it hasn't really um, come into play very much. Um, it's more often than not when I turn off the when we lose power or yes. when um, when I turn off to do something and then I forget about turning off the skimmer. And <laughs> just it just yeah, it turns it off. Wet skins day. If it saves yeah. you flooding this off once, it's, yeah, um, yeah, it's right. So that's it's right. already done its trick. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, so I've been happy with that. That works exceptionally well as well. Very nice. And then I've got a really large um, refugium. Yeah. Um, with all the chato growing, that grows uh, quite well. Uh, Definitely. I love the way you've sectioned off that section of the uh, sump as well, just so you don't get any growth elsewhere. Yeah, correct. So what that does is stops the light from bleeding mm -hmm. everywhere else. But yeah. not only that, I can then pull out these individual uh, pieces of uh, perspex and yes. just give them a clean. So I don't have to worry about um, crawling into the into very, the sump trying to clean clever. the glass. Yeah, nice. And I noticed you've got a little power head down in there as well. Yeah, I've got a power the... head in there just to agitate the water and yeah. keep it all clean. So I imagine when you've got a, a fuge section that large with um, that much keto in there that, yeah, she could end up being a pretty big sponge. So having a yep. good, uh, a good uh, flow pump in there, just keeping it all suspended. Yeah, and then I've got a homemade... Um, I forgot what you call it now. Turf scrubber. Turf scrubber, yeah. So that, yeah. that, that does a phenomenal job. That, I, I actually put that in. Um, I was quite happy with the, the chodo growing, but then when I, as I said earlier, when the, uh, the nitrate um, overflowed and then mm -hmm. went up from 5 to 25, mm -hmm. I chucked that in, and that, that's been doing a phenomenal job. That's a homemade turf scrubber, and as, um, as you said, it, um, it does uh, removes all the nitrate and phosphate, and that's, yes. that's in, a, in two or three weeks, that's brought it back down from what, what was about 25, yes. back down to about um, seven or eight now. So wow. I've actually turned that off. So if, I, mean, yeah, I can yeah. show you some of the, um, the growth on it. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to get into this, but. it's <laughs> all right, we'll have a look. Have a look, so you can see, I don't know if you can see all that green. Yeah, wow. All that green um, growth. Yeah, having no issues growing at all. No, wow. that's right. So, so that's just a water feed in through a pipe there, which just trickles down over correct. like a mesh with yep. some, um, looks with like some, LED floodlights on yeah, the side. Yeah, Bunnings floodlights. Amazing. And, um, Simplicity yeah. working an absolute treat. Yeah, so that, that works a treat. And I've, like I said, it's, it's working so well that I've actually um, turned it back down now. It's only on for a couple of hours a, a day. So. Yep, yep. Amazing. Um, and I notice you've got a little uh, air vent in there as well, just keeping nice... Uh, Make sure that the uh, cabinet doesn't get too humid yep. or anything in there. Yeah, so I've got vents, one there, and then there's one up in the roof as well. Yes. And that's just running a, a exhaust fan, just yeah, nice. 24 by 7, yeah, um, yeah. permanently on. So. Yep, just make sure just that uh, you don't get that humid air building up around all of your expensive electronics. <laughs> it's yeah. always a good idea. Yeah, so that just keeps sucking the air out. And then um, a Vectra pump on this side, uh, the large one. Yes. That runs at about 30 or, f or about 40%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then all the, oh, I might just move across. So I just yeah, you're right, go for it. And then I've got all the dosing containers from KH to potassium, calcium, magnesium. Wow. Some trace elements and strontium. Big on a big wall of dosing there, all custom yep. made Yeah, they're all chambers. custom made, yep. Beautiful, all your power supplies and controls all mounted up there. Yep. Very nice. It's an absolute treat. So tell us about, uh, you mentioned about the nitrate spike. Um, tell us about, about where you aim to keep your parameters on the tank. Uh, nitrate normally between five and 10. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Phosphate between 0.05 and uh, less than 0.1 generally. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Um, and all the rest are pretty much of the standard range, sort of calcium about um, under between 450 to 500. Mm -hmm. um, KH uh, hovers generally around nine. Yes. Um, magnesium, I think about 1350. Okay, yep. So I think they're all pretty standard. Yeah, numbers. nothing out of the so ordinary there. You're not right. trying anything left field no, or anything correct. like that. No, they're yeah. all standard, standard numbers. So um, I did an ICP test about two or three months ago. Okay. And everything was okay. There was um, quite high uh, tin in there for some reason. Okay. I, can't, I couldn't work out why, because there's nothing in here that's rusting. Um, I used to have some, um, marine, not marine pure, but some a similar bio me, um, yes. biomedia in there. And I thought, I'm going to take it out just to see, because I've, I've had um, issues with marine pure in the past leaching sure. aluminium. Yep. Um, so I got rid of that back years ago. And I had the other biomedia, and I thought maybe that's leaching tin, because I can't work out where, there's nothing else in here that's corroding. Mm. I mean, I, I keep opening the... Um, the, the Vortec pumps and cleaning them and there's no corrosion on any any of the um, other apparatus. So I figured, yes. I'm not sure where it's coming from. So I guess it's a process of elimination now. Definitely, definitely. Oh, well, it doesn't appear to be causing too many issues in the tank. No, everything seems like it's still quite healthy, even though there is a, um, it's in the, according to the, the results, it's in the red zone, but. Okay, yeah, well, one thing to keep in mind, yeah. keep an eye on. Yep. Now. Speaking of the corals and their, their health and how they're looking, can you take us through some of your favourite pieces? You've got no shortage of coral in there and I know that a lot of these have come from previous systems as well. Yeah. So you've, you've got some pieces in there that you've probably had for years, but um, yeah, um, take us through some of your favourites and any sort of stories behind them. Uh, favourites? Um, you can see the, um, the clowns hosting the carpet nem i mean i've always loved it uh, the, the carpet nems absolutely but, uh, and being a new piece it's always going to be one of your favorites <laughs> correct as you as you add new pieces the new one tends to be your um <laughs> favorite so um yeah i just love watching when you drop food into the uh, the yeah. nem how it just grabs and it's all the response stuck on it so yeah um, did the clarkies immediately go to it or did they take some time i used to have some red bubble tip anemones in here i had a yes. variety of them sprinkled over that that's why that's as you can see, that's kind of like an island. Yes. Um, and I had a few on there. But they kept on moving, and then I was worried about them going into the power heads, and I was mm -hmm, worried mm -hmm. about um, a lot of things. And I thought, I, I much prefer a carpet nem. And yeah. um, I got rid of all of them. Um, and they pretty much, as soon as I took out the, the red bubble tips, not soon, within a couple of days, they went from the bubble tips to the, um, the carpet. So. Yeah, well, just moved very quickly across. Yep. Very nice. Um, yeah, I, was, I love the, uh, the nice colours of the clam. Um, you, yeah. pretty, a bit hard to see, but as I'll be as sure to get a from top the, down from the shot. Top, yeah, the top yeah. down. The, the higher you look um, from the top, the better colours look. So absolutely, that's quite nice. I don't that's know quite it's, cleverly sat there in a little rock. Is that was that a specific rock you chose? Yeah, yeah I kind of um, put it there so it could actually um, it's be close to the, the front. Way. Yeah, and sit yeah. upright as well. Works well. Um, I'm not sure what's happening with that. Uh, Gone at the back there. That seems like it's closed up for about a couple of weeks, and I don't know why that's different to all the rest of them, which seem to be quite happy. <laughs> yeah, so the rest of the Gonies are loving life, and that yeah. one's just having a sulk. That's yeah, that's Gonies for you. That's right. I love this super bright leather up here. That's yeah. just the yellowest leather I've seen. Very, very beautiful. Yeah, and that bubblegum digi's doing quite well. That's you can see it's encrusting onto the rocks at the yeah, back there, yeah. so it's going quite well. It's just supporting itself with a couple of extra encrusting locations yep it's always tempting to move stuff around and, and um i try and resist it as much as i can i think i'm pretty happy with the way things are now so i'm gonna try and keep my hands out and just leave them where they are <laughs> yeah fair enough they all look pretty happy there yeah so what about these big a cans you've got here in the center yeah nice big big cans. fluffy a cans look. yeah they're puffed up they're quite happy as well oh, um great. as a Got a, quite a fair few trackies as well, and they're all mm -hmm, like you can see mm -hmm. the one down the corner there. That's yeah, puffed oh, up as absolutely massive, floating around in the water. Yeah, yeah, just jiggling away, looking a treat. Yeah, I love the way that it's curled its its outer edges upwards, almost like it's a it's trying to emulate the uh, Monty Cap. It's yeah. <laughs> it's got an incredible pattern to it. it looks beautiful. Um, yeah, so that um, moving across. There's a couple of gold torches a few torches there all yeah. together the yeah. green one's doing really well it's um you can see it's very well extended out definitely i love the way you've even got is it a green torch spawn down here 
Um, I don't even know what that is. I sure. That, that's not something that I bought or put in. That that just just appeared, appeared one, day. one day. Yeah, yeah. It looks it's like been... it could be a spawn from the green torch, yeah, which is pretty is. cool. Yeah. Just sitting down there, growing away, which is yeah, really awesome to see. Um, is this big lobo up here? The red piece, yeah, is it? Big, big or some filia, or no, it's a lobo. Lobo, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's going quite well as well. Nice. I love this staghorn you've got up there. The blue, yeah, blue. staghorn looks yep. really nice. Yep. And of course, the almost thirty layers of uh, red monty cap, just an absolute showpiece. Yeah, that's going really well. And then um, a couple of uh, there's a few more um, uh, trackies. Yes, they're doing quite well as well. Quite like this. Uh, is it another lobo on the end here? This down uh, the bottom. Uh, no oh, one no. up. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what that's called, but I think it's something related to a lobo. It's much. It's a much larger. Yes. Beautiful. And the turbinaria up there, the green one up there, yeah, that's, that's got nice. the most extension on a turbinaria I think I've ever seen. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And then I've got this, I forgot what that's called. That'll be this. tickled pink Montipora, I yeah, think. Yeah, Monty, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's been growing quite well. Um, yeah. Very fast grower. Looks beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it looks an absolute treat. Now, fish wise tell us about some of the fish uh some of the stories some of the ones you've had for a while any any in particular that um have had a journey uh the blue the blue tanks one that i've had for probably seven or eight years as well wow, as the, okay the yellow tang i mean yep. obviously a lot of people in the industry would know now how much um yeah. the yellow tangs have gone up <laughs> yeah definitely price, so not as got, common as they used to be that's yeah, for sure like, yeah you don't often see them in uh, aquariums anymore that was one of the I guess standard fish most people would have had when they started off. So definitely had that for a number of years. Um, yeah, added added a few more the clown tang and, and the side hole in the last probably six months. Okay. And then uh, the most recent acquisition, as I said, is the um, the lipstick tang, yeah. which you know it's quite quite impressive with the barbs. I just love the way it looks and it looks it looks so vicious, but it's quite it's peaceful huge, compared to huge presence to it. Absolutely. Yeah. And even some of the fish, a quarter of its size tend to try and bully it, but um, yeah. and it just <laughs> swims away. And I'm thinking, geez, you, you got those big, massive, powerful barbs and you're yep. swimming away from a little tiny yeah. little fish. So. If you wanted to put them away, you could, but yeah. uh, sometimes when you know you've got the power, you don't have to use it. Yeah. Also notice you got a uh, neon dotty back in there. I think it was. Yeah, I do have one yeah. there somewhere. Yeah, there. yeah. I was, I was a bit concerned about adding that dotty back because I've got a normal, um, regular dotty back as yeah, well. Yeah, yep. I saw a yeah royal dotty back. Royal dotty back, correct. And that normally sort of sits on this. Yeah, side. he's been up over here swimming about. But yeah. um, the neon dotty backs of fish you don't see all that often. So cool addition yeah, in the tank. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, super cool addition. Something that um, yeah you don't see in tanks all that often, which is very, very cool. And the um, Antheas, are they bi-colour Antheas? Yeah, they are bi-colour. Yeah, beautiful. And then there's a uh, purple Queen Anthea there as well. Yeah, stunning, stunning. Fantastic, now you touched on uh, the maintenance of the system, how you can do that quite easily with yep. the uh, water change. What's your maintenance routine like? Uh, I normally do m once a month mm -hmm. water changes, okay. and normally about 200 litres. Yep. Um, the system uh, volume of this would be 1,500 yeah, litres? Yeah, I think it's about 1,500 plus the sump, and the sump's quite large because yeah. it takes up most of the cabinet. So yep. um, I normally do, like I said, about 200 litres, and mm -hmm. I've got a mix, um, I've got RO um, purifiers at the back in the sure. garage, and then I mix that with um, salt. Yes. And then, like I said, drain about 200 litres out. Sure. And then pump 200 litres back in. in. What, what salt are you using? Um, I used to use Aquaforest yes. and I've now switched because I, I noticed that when I mix it, there's a bit of slime on the top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I've changed it over to reef crystals for the last couple of times. Okay. And I've noticed that, that um, when I mix it, there's, yep. there's pretty hardly any slime in the yeah, um, nice. thing. So, Mixing clean and I was also way. wondering whether that might have been the source of the tin as well because yeah, like I said to you earlier, I, I, I'm, a try bit, something. Yeah, well, I'm trying everything. Yeah, yeah. But then when I... <laughs> If it does get rid of it, I'm not necessarily going to know what was the fix. No, no, anyway, but, but at the end of the day, if it gets rid of it, it gets rid cares, of it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so like I said, I removed the bio balls and changed the salt and yep. um, see what that does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, monthly water changes. Monthly water changes, And yeah. anything else? I mean, you'd be topping up, the, if by dosing, you'd be going through a bit of dosing in this tank, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, I use a lot of KH, yep. about 200 mil a day. Yep, wow, okay. Um, yep. 
Yeah, so I've got to top that up. Um, and then RODI, I've got a 100 litre drum at the back. Yep. There's a, I don't know if you noticed, there's a float valve. It's a very, very basic setup. That's so, all right. Gravity that's never gravity. fails. That's right. You can, <laughs> see, you can see it in the back corner there behind the um, turf scrubber. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So it's just a gravity fed $2 valve that um, keeps, keeps it up to the right level. So yeah. Absolutely. Like I said, gravity will never fail. That's one yep. thing I can promise you. Yeah, and that's been working quite well. So I got to, I normally, um, I think I go through about 10 or so litres of um, water a day, evaporation. Okay. Yep. So every 10 days or so, I've got to um, fill the drum up again. Sure, so. sure. And cleaning wise? Cleaning, clean the glass maybe a couple of times a week. Yep. And then I normally feed the fish once a day. Yep, yep. Um, did you want me to feed them now? Do you want to? Sure, let's yeah? do it. Yeah, let's yeah. Do it. Okay. So normally what I feed them is, um, I've got about a mix of five, normally about five or six cubes that I okay. thaw out. Just to frost in a bit of tank water? Yeah, a bit of tank water. I, I generally do um, drain drain it. Yep. And then I normally also feed in a couple of sheets of nori folded up. Oh, yep, ready to go. Look at that. Yeah, I was going to feed just before you got down. So I normally chuck them all in and they go crazy. <laughs> And I try and keep them two separate ones so that yeah, just some don't get it out bullied, bullied with the others. Yeah. Yep, yep. Gives everyone a chance that way. And then I put in this, I put the food in at the same time so whoever's not eating nori can eat other things. Gives everyone a direction to go. Yep. Works a treat. How, how many cubes of frozen did you say you feed a day? Uh, about five or six. Yep. But I only feed once a day. Sometimes I also... Um, Throw some pallets in, or I'll throw in some flakes mm -hmm. just for a bit of variety. Just some variety, yeah, yeah. yeah. But generally, um, cube frozen is the, is the main source of yeah. food that I would feed. It definitely creates a fair uh, hive of activity. Yeah, it does. <laughs> you can see all the fish have come out the dotty backs there. The yeah. The dotty back, the, both of them. Yep. There's also a red, I don't know if you've noticed. I did the, see the red, red scooter blenny. Yeah. That's, yeah, or red dragonette, yeah, I should say. The red dragonette tries to get food if it can, but um, because it's quite slow moving compared to the slow... <laughs> compared to the activity struggles. of these guys. Sometimes I think that to give it a bit of a chance, I turn the, um, the flow off. Yep. Um, especially if I see it looking a bit thin, but it's looking quite Oh, he didn't like, look too thin to me when nah. I saw it. <laughs> he looked yeah, like he was getting plenty quite, of food. He's quite chunky, so... Actually, tell us about the scape. We haven't talked about the scape in there. Did you make this yourself? Yeah, yeah, I made it yep. myself. Like, like I said, a lot of it's from um, the years of um, yeah, the, the previous tanks, just yes. moving them across. So, um, yeah, originally I, I did an island there for the, the bubble tip and enemies. Yep, yep. Um, and I also made it that way. So if, the, if there is fish that are um, causing major issues, what I could do is I can drop in some crate yeah, nice. down here yep, yep. and partition it off to um, catch whatever yeah, the, the troublemaker is. So Very clever. Definitely easier to catch them out of a um, one and a half foot space than it is an eight foot space. Yeah, that's right. And there's not, there's not too much issue with the rock there. I can move it without you yeah. know, too much disturbance. Whereas trying to get a piece of rock out here is a Oh yeah, you get a, a fish bigger, buried uh, down into the, right. the swim space down there. It's going to be it's a big a, problem. Definitely a problem. You're not going to get him out of there without uh, moving quite a few corals. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it, really, in terms of um, yeah, live rock. I mean, you can see it's all covered with coralline, which is a good oh, it's sign. Solidly purple, definitely. Yeah. yeah, for a tank that yeah has just gone 12 months, is um, showing some fantastic signs of maturity. That's for sure. Yeah. And what's the uh, future plans for the tank? I mean, obviously, it's looking pretty good now, but uh, uh, only a year old. It's got another 10 plus years life to it. Yeah, look, uh, I'm pretty happy with what's in there at the moment. Um, I'm very, very selective now in terms of corals and or fish. So I normally quarantine any fish I buy yep. uh, for a few weeks, at least to, up to a month. Because sure. I've still kept the old uh, Aqua One, sorry, the Aqua um, Cube that I've got. Yes. Um, and that serves as a quarantine tank. Yeah, and nice. I normally put them in there for at least two to four weeks. Yep. Uh, before I move them in here, so sure. Run any sort of treatment or program on there, or just observation? No, nothing. Just yep. Just a basic tank with um, feeding and no meds or anything like yeah, that. Yep. Just try and observe. Keep it, yeah. Yep. Try and keep it um, natural. Make sure that they're all okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Here's our red scooters just come out on cue, looking for some food. What a beautiful fish! Sensational coloration. And there's another. Um, 
Oh yeah, you got a mandarin up mandarin, there. Yeah, he's looking quite chunky as well. <laughs> Very nice. Look at these acans. We've obviously got some food and they're just closing up. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. So yeah, now the tank so, a year old, you're yeah, probably looking just to I'm enjoy like now. Quite selective. Um, yeah. I've still got a bit of space here and there for some corals, mm -hmm. and I've lost, like I said, I lost a few with the um, the mishap of the dosa. Um, yes. So I had another quite a, a vibrant green um, frog spawn, and I also had a uh, green, uh, really vibrant green goni as well, which. At some stage, if I bump into the right place at the right price, I'll, I'll replace them. But of at course. this stage, I might just um, happy with with the way it's going. I want to try and, like I said, keep my hands out of it as much sure, as I can. Sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, I can understand why uh, you would be happy with it. It looks an absolute treat. And equipment-wise, you think you're all you're all set now? No need to um, change anything? No. Well, the, the, like a lot of the equipment's quite new, so this, this yeah. skimmer's only a couple of years old. The yeah, is yeah. new. Um, and the pumps is the pumps new as well, so yep. I'm quite happy with everything the way it's all going. So I've got. I mean, it's always good to get new equipment and new lights, and good to get things uh, new. But uh, I figure if it's if it ain't broken, don't touch the it. The gear's so. working exactly, and you, yeah. the results you're getting would suggest that um, changing anything at this point in time would be uh, an unnecessary risk. Yeah. So in terms of fish, you know, I'd love to get a, a, um, an Achilles, but. The way that they're priced these days is, is <laughs> yeah, so expensive compared to what, especially what if were. you've been in, uh, in the industry for a long time and you've seen how much they used to be. And that how makes it now. extra hard, doesn't it? Yeah, when, it does. um, Even like yeah. the yellow tanks, you know, seeing them at $100, $150, you know, 10 years ago. Yes. And now they're, yeah, you know, seven or eight times that price. So. Yeah, yeah. Makes it difficult to uh, purchase. But yeah. Uh, yeah, for a lot of new reefers, they, that's just the price the, they know them as, I guess. But yeah. Um, yeah, an Achilles would be cool, but I tell you what, phew, an Achilles with a clown tang and a Soho plus a couple of powders. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a bit of a risk and a lot of phew. money to, to risk because oh. you don't know how it's going to go. So. I just don't know how it's going to go. It would be a heck of a risk. Yeah. But, um, it would be an impressive sight to see, that's for sure. No, no. Just run us through. So you've got um, your Reef Pure RO system. Yep, Reef Pure RO system, five stage. Yes. Um... Yeah, so I normally, like I said, once a month, and, and, and this drum uh, is a 200 litre drum. Yes. So normally uh, let this fill up, takes it probably 48 hours to yes. fill up. And then what I've done is I've got graduated markings here on, a, on the side, yeah, so perfect. I can actually see how much water's in the tank. Very clever. Um, and then I just leave us a, a, um, a Sitchi pump in here. Yes. Uh, and then run a hose from here to the back. So I run. So you can see here, um, to drain the tank, I just yes. open this, Yep. and then open another valve on the inside, so it's got two valves to, for safety. Lovely. Yeah, of course. Just in case. <laughs> you don't want someone to bump that um, valve that's and right, yeah. flood your shit. some kid to come and open it, so <laughs> find out what this does. Yes. Um, so yeah, I've got to open both valves, and then I normally drain 200 litres, yes. and then I run um, this hose from there back into the um, Yarrow DI water, or yes. the salt water, and turn the pump on, and it pumps it straight in. Pumps so it straight that's back it. in. Perfect. And this is the RO DI, uh, where it just gravity fed, yeah. goes into the um, the tank, and this is the exhaust fan that you talked about earlier from the yeah, bottom. Yeah, yeah. Goes up into the into the ceiling. Yeah, fantastic. And this here is the uh, observation tank. Yeah, the observation holding tank, which I normally keep. Um, there's a clown in there that's hosting the bubble tip, so you can see it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but yes, it's sitting yep. in there. And then yeah, I just normally put uh, whatever I buy in there for. A few weeks to make sure it's all healthy and okay yep before i put it into the display yeah smart move nicely done good way to utilize a existing tank yeah rather than get rid of it and sell it i thought you know that was originally the plan i thought i might as well just keep it and um use it as a holding tank for, for sure thank you well anything else you'd like to share with the viewers um any advice or words of wisdom to help people replicate a tank like this oh look i, I think if you start off small um and then gradually grow you learn from you always going to make mistakes and yes. i think everyone in the industry has made um some mistakes so, of course. and you obviously learn from those so i think that the smaller you tank the smaller the costs and the smaller your mistakes so yep yep absolutely that yeah, look, i'm pretty happy with everything at the moment i've got no real um aspirations to change anything substantial or make any big changes so 
Um, even like I said, even with the corals, I'm very selective in terms of what I buy now because yeah. it's quite quite happy with what I've got. Yes, I can appreciate that. Well, um, thank you so much for uh, letting me into your house with a camera rolling so we could check out this tank and, and taking us through what's uh, unbelievably a short journey. It's only a year old and it already looks like this. I know some things have come across, but um, it's you will know with your experience in the hobby, it's not just as simple as bringing stuff across from one tank to another. You've got to have the, the receiving tank right, and you obviously have because things look absolutely incredible in there and um normally i say i can't wait to see where this tank goes in the next um year two or three years but this feels like it's already been running for five years so i, I possibly couldn't imagine that it's going to look all that different in a few years time because probably the only thing that will change is you'll be um, having to trim back a bit more of uh, your monty caps and maybe some of your acros but everything else should be looking pretty similar and um i wonder if maybe down the track we will see an achilles in there but uh I think you're in a position where you can just sit back and enjoy this tank for many years to come. So um, well done. Yep, thanks. Well, that's the plan now, just to sit back and enjoy it and just do the, the minimal maintenance that I need to do. So yeah. Absolutely living the dream. Well done. And thanks again. Thanks, Sam. Bit of pleasure. All right, guys, there you have it. That is the tour of Manny's amazing eight foot custom reef tank. I hope you enjoyed the tour as much as I enjoyed filming it. A massive shout out to Manny. Thank you so much for the invite to come and film your tank. I really do hope to see how it goes in the next year or two, because I think that system is absolutely cranking for the one year mark. And um, I, I just don't know where it'll go from here. Like I touched on in the video, I think it's probably going to be pretty similar in a couple of years time, because it'll just be a matter of trimming the corals that are already there but I'm excited to see where it goes as much as you guys are. Now, if you've got any questions, comments, feedback, anything at all for either Manny or myself, feel free to pop it in the comment section down below because I do personally reply to each and every comment there. It is the best way to get hold of me. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, stay safe, keep roofing. Cheers, bye.